Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Starbound by Chucklefish. And this game has been around for a while, but just today they released a new update that adds a lot of really cool things to the game. A new travel interface, new workshops and such, and also a whole new mech system where you get to build a mech and explore space stations and other anomalies. And I'm really excited about it. So I've been meaning to do a series on this game for a while, but I was waiting for this update to come out. I've spent the time prior to the update building up my resources, and as you can see here, I haven't really got to where I wanted to be. I have all my workshops, I've got the best armor I can get at this moment, but as you can see from my spaceship, it is very bare bones. I haven't done much with it. I do have a rudimentary crew that I've picked up throughout the universe, but I wanted to do kind of a casual and fun series with this game. It's not going to be a full series. It's not going to be a daily thing where I show you everything I do. It's more going to be just casual, showing off the bases I've put together. In this new version, you can build a star base. I'm really excited to try that. And I've also invited a bunch of my YouTuber friends who also play and enjoy this game to guest star. Now, I'm not going to give any names right now because... A few people have said they're going to do it, but nobody's really confirmed, and I don't want to over-promise and under-deliver, but I look forward to hopefully recording some episodes in the future with other really cool YouTubers. And again, just casual, just building things, doing things, nothing real serious, nothing real day-to-day, -day, just having fun. But what I wanted to do for this episode, this first episode, was just kind of talk about what I've accomplished so far, some of my strategies and what I plan to do. So first off, as you can see here, I am a race known as a Nova Kid. That's a, one of the races of the game. It's actually one of the rarest races. You don't often see them floating around. In fact, the first other Nova Kid besides myself that I've seen so far in playing this, and I've probably been doing this for about 20 hours, I'd say, this particular universe, is on a space station that I just explored this evening. So, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about how I do. So first off, my spaceship, as you can see, is very rudimentary. I just have storage and workshops. It's really just a hub for me to move around, store things, and get things built. But I also have a number of worlds that I've already worked on. I have a world where I can recruit the bird people, the avians, the... I'm not even sure what their real name is. I have a world where I can recruit the fish people, the oxalotls. I have an initial base set up with farms that I'll show you, and I have a planet where I can recruit humans. Humans are actually the second most uncommon race after the Nova Kids. They're very hard to find, and it took me a while to find these guys, which is why it's so important for me. And of course the Ark, which has to do with uh, the campaign. I've completed the campaign already, but there's some new stuff now with the, the update that I'm really excited about. So again, I want to make this clear that this is not going to be like a full playthrough of the game. It's not going to showcase any of the campaign stuff. It's not going to be me doing everything on camera. It's just going to be occasional episodes just showing what I've accomplished. And again, hopefully having other awesome YouTubers collaborating and just chatting and hanging out. So I want to I wanna make that clear getting into this. It's going to be a very casual thing. But let me go ahead and show you my... Initial base. Now, this is actually the first planet that I ever landed on. And you can tell because when you first land on a planet, you're in a situation kind of like this, which is a mine where you have to go down and you have to get cores to fix your spaceship. But I've done a lot of development. I tried to make it organic development so it kind of fits the aesthetic of it. But see, this all this was here when I first got here. There's like a hiker character who has all this stuff, and they actually got trapped down in my base. This is my initial farm. It rains a lot on this planet, so I didn't have to worry about fertilizer, or not fertilizer, I'm sorry, but water, like uh, sprinklers, anything like that. I have a whole lot of food, but honestly, I haven't actually taken any food from these in a while because I have a better farm that you'll see in just a moment. So then as you come into the base, it's all very rudimentary. It's not The entrance itself is very basic. I did make a little second entrance here with a nice light, a hatch. And this is where I'm growing some trees and some silk. But uh, as you come down, things get a little nicer. So I have this little area here with flowers where all these little animals can, can graze. 
and I come in and harvest them every time I'm back on the base. There's different fluffalos and mooshies, and so if they produce milk, the chickens produce eggs, the robot chickens produce batteries, and then there's these four components that each of the fluffalos make. There's the fire, the poison, the electrical, and another one. And they all make these different components, and they're useful for things. This here is a storage area I put together, just a bunch of chests with random things. Some have just furniture that I've uncovered throughout my journeys, and by uncovered I mean stolen. Different furniture from different, like this is, um, oh these are pet collars for if I want to capture a pet, but this is more like the glitch, the robotic medieval people, this is their furniture, this is the florin furniture. The reason why I'm keeping the furniture is because you can have tenants in your bases, and based on the furniture that you put in these bases, it determines the kind of tenant that you get. And there's tons of special tenants. You can purchase special furniture at the Ark that allows you to have some special tenants, and I'll show you a few of them in a minute. Random furniture that I've picked up. Oh, and I just totally ruined that. That's a bummer. I'm not going to fix it on camera, though. I'll do it later. That's one thing. I wish there was a way you could turn off your, turn off your thing, because you make mistakes. Let's just go six. That should be... F okay, cool. So this is... All these are unique weapons that you can get. And at this point in the game, once you've beaten the campaign, there's a way to upgrade all of them. But I haven't gotten quite through to it yet. More furniture. More furniture. This is like building materials like dirt and sand and basically just the... Like the background, see the bricks you see, stuff like that. One thing I love about this game is you can freely customize anything. You all know I love Dwarf Fortress. Well, this is very similar. You can basically create whatever base you want in any style that you want, but it also gives you the combination of that plus an amazing exploration system. Like, it never gets old, even though there's only like seven kinds of ores and only five or six kinds of races. It never gets old. You always want to explore a new planet and see what you can find. These are all the books and documents I've picked up. So as you go down, now this space used to be a lot more full. There used to be workshops and stuff here, but I moved all those workshops to my ship. One, because it's a more central location, but two, because it started lagging around here, which is crazy. My computer is brand new practically, top of the line, so it makes me laugh that this game kind of lags it, but I think the reason why is because this is a big open space, and you can see these lights are very detailed. The lights illuminate an area that's very specific to where they're pointing to, which is some great programming, but it does tax your system quite a bit. So this is my entire fridge area. These are all my seeds for plants, and this is where I store food items, cooking items. And I have made it really simple. I I've picked out some food items that I want to produce, and I'm mass producing them. But there's a whole lot of food items I haven't produced yet that I really want to. This is my costume section. I don't know why it's shaking like that. This is my costume section. I'm trying to fill out different special costumes here. You can see I'm partially through with a few of them. I want to add more later. And these are my cool farms that are specifically to do what I want. So for example, oh and here's the hiker that got trapped down here. How you doing? Yeah, thanks. So, so the way I got this worked out is I got four sugar, four wheat, Oh, and these are two little critters that I picked up on my journeys and just kind of left here. They really like the farm. I put them out down here, but they got up into the farm and they never left. And here's some bananas. So I have these three particular plants, and this is why. First, I'm going to replant everything. And since these are indoors, I do have a sprinkler system. And as you can see, it's... I don't know if you need light to grow plants, but in case you do, I have this completely... The back of this completely taken out, so you can kind of see through it. But I have glass blocks. And let's do the sugar. One, two, three, and four. Excellent. So now that's ready to regrow. But the reason why I have those particular items is because when you come down here to my cooking station, there's one particular thing that I can make with them, which is, I think it's in the desserts, the banana cream pie. See, it needs wheat, sugar, milk, and bananas. So this produces the sugar the bananas and the wheat, and then my mushies produce the milk. And banana cream pies are a good food item, I find, because if you eat them, not only do they give you plenty of hunger filling, as you can see up here, but they also give you a boost to your energy, which I think is really cool. All right, so down here is the initial cave area. I haven't done much with this. This girl got trapped down here. I tried to produce this airlock to stop people, but it doesn't. They just go down there. And you, I think you might have saw it lag just now. For some reason, it hates this area right here and always lags it. 
So let's get out of here. These are trophies that I got from the arena fights. That's part of the campaign. So then you go up here, and this is my kind of tenant area. So this first tenant is based on the special furniture from the shop. It's like a plague doctor kind of guy. Or no, this is actually this guy. He's a he's kind of just an evil looking dude. I forget exactly the his specific name. Then we have down here, this is the plague doctor dude. It's like a coffin, ornate furniture. I think if I go to this thing here, I can actually... No, it doesn't really tell me, but... They all have names. So if you go to the shop called Frog Furnishings, each day, and I mean each day in, in real life, they have a different furnishing. And this one gives you like a Plague Doctor guy. And this one I made myself. This is just from stuff I looted from Avian Tombs. So there's different settlers or tenants based on the, the cities. Like if I went to an Avian city and I took furniture from there, it would spawn a different tenant than this room, which is stuff I took from an Avian Tomb, which is a dungeon. And so he's like a priest. He's pretty cool, actually. I like him a lot. One day he told me that I shined like starlight. And that's honestly like the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. <laughs> so then we have kind of a, a place. This is for a merchant. Now you can spawn a merchant from any different race, depending on the furniture. But I just put in basic wooden furniture and let it give me whoever it gave me. And interestingly enough, it gave me a human merchant. This dude right here. Nick. And, uh... You can sell. He has basic stuff. His inventory never changes, but you can do quests for him, which improves the inventory. But really nothing I particularly love. But I usually use him to sell stuff, too. So, But you can have a merchant, again, from any of the different races. It's not a special tenant. This is a special tenant, though. This is, again, furniture that was all bought at the Frog Furnishings. And it gave me this little, like, ballerina princess lady. Forget her name. What is her name? Usually it, it shows. I don't know why it's not doing that. Maybe if I do it like this. No. And then this is also special furniture that I bought at the Frog Furnishings. This is kind of like a rustic cabiny thing. So there's, I don't know, it's about 10 or 15 different types of special furniture you can buy. Again, the, it restocks every day in real life. So every 24 hours, I just go back and see what else is new. I have a couple more left, but I haven't made them. Right now, I only have these tenants. But eventually, I'm going to have a lot more. You can get really special tenants from, like, very specific mini biomes on planets if you get enough of their furniture type. But that is my initial base. This is where I kind of started the game and where I made the armor that I'm wearing now. As you can see, there's two different types of armor if you're not familiar with the game. There's the armor that gives you your stats, and then there's the cosmetic armor that makes your person look the way they look, which I think is a wonderful addition to the game. But what really kind of bothers me, though, is that you can't just have your cosmetic armor be nothing. Like, what I mean to say is, I don't really want to show this backpack, but you need this backpack to survive on some of the higher difficulty worlds. So I can't just take it off. But at the same time, you can replace it with a cosmetic backpack, but you can't replace it with nothing. You can't just have yourself running around without a backpack. And I wish there was a way you could do that, because that would be really helpful for me to express who my character is. I kind of treating this guy like a Doctor Who character. He's like a really rare alien species that you don't see much of and he has a ton of human <laughs> human companions they're my favorite npc race so that's kind of who he is you can see he's dressed up really nice this, this particular race the nova kids they're kind of based on the wild west so their armor sets are based on cowboys sheriffs outlaws wranglers you know and, they, and if you if you hear them talk they do a lot of like old west speech she's like silk is a bit fancy for the likes of me but i can sell it or lucky number three. Kind of rustic looking, but it'll do. You know, each race, you can pick whichever race you are, and, and they have different things to say when looking at things. But I particularly liked the Nova Kids. I was a human the last time. So, and then I have different recruitment areas. Right now, again, I only have avian, the fish people, and the humans. I'm only going to show you the human one, because it's the most developed. And when I mean developed, let me show you what I mean. So, in order to solve quests for these people, they generally ask you to go somewhere nearby. And in this particular camp, they typically ask me to go to a nearby Hylodal, that's the underwater fish people, castle. So what I did is I built this causeway out of dirt. I know it completely defies all the laws of physics, but this allows me to basically run really fast from the human campsite to the place where most of the quests are without having, because if you just go along the terrain, you have to jump up mountains. Sometimes 
you can't just run you have to maneuver around obstacles fight enemies so this way it just allows me to go there really fast and what happens the reason why you'd want to do this they give you things but it's they're really not that valuable the reason why you want to do quests for people is occasionally when you finish a quest for somebody they will say hey i want to join your ship and that's how you get crew for your mm -hmm. ship. And early on in the game, getting crew is important because you can't increase the size of your ship without them. Well, that's not true. You can technically, but there's another way to do it, but it's more expensive. And that is you do buy illegal um, illegal passes, I guess, to make your ship bigger. But that costs a ton of pixels, which is like the currency of the game. So as you can see here, this would be an awful long way to go just regularly throughout the game. So this causeway that I built makes it super easy. And I want to do this on all the different worlds that I set up for recruiting members of the different races. The one I did for the... I think it's the bird people. See? And then it ends up... This is where a lot of the quests end up in this particular area. So that's my human encampment. The one I did, I believe, for the bird people is a little bit nicer. It took longer to build, but it makes a little bit more sense. Like, if you count the laws of physics. And what it is, it's an underground tunnel. So if I talk to this bird guy and he's like, hey, can you go to this place to do something for me? Well, I have this underground tunnel that I built. It's a little harder to do because you have to fill in gaps in the underground and dig. But once you have it set up, it's really nice. And so you just run through here and follow it all the way to your quest objective. And I have a number of places where I can come up. I put some torches to make it nice. But that's essentially it. So I make it so it's super easy to do quests for the quest givers in order to get them to join my crew. Although right now my crew is full. Crew members have different purposes. Some are soldiers, some are engineers, some are mechanics, and they all do things for you. And I'm missing a couple right now. I don't have any chemists or tailors. I have a bunch of soldiers. So eventually I need to diversify my crew a little bit. Wish I could run longer. It always bugs me that the running runs out. <laughs> runs out. But so essentially, I just did. It took me forever to put this together, but it's a it's a way to quickly get from the quest giver to the quest. And we're going to go there because I can't actually escape right now with my teleporter until I'm on the surface. Okay, so here we are. This was the avian tomb where the quest typically takes place. Oh, another thing I like about this game, and it's just a good thing to say right now because I can hear it, is the music. The music for this game... I don't know what to say. Like, I've been sick the past couple days, and it's just so relaxing and calming that I just couldn't wait to get home and play this game because it, I just love the music so much. All right, but probably one of the reasons why you want to see this is to see some of the new features. So let's do that, huh, real quick before we end the episode. So first off, the new travel map is completely different than it used to be. It used to be where you... um. Gosh, I hardly even remember how it used to be, but it wasn't this interactive. You would go from one system to another. It was like a star map, and you'd go from one system to another, and it would just tell you what planets there are, and you'd go to them. But this way, you can, like, see, like, this is a star base. So you right-click it, and your ship just takes off to it. And here's a little representation. Oh, this green thing has a little representation of your ship. So it kind of shows you going there. And for a star base, that's it. If you're going to a planet, then you have to click it again and zoom into the planet. But for a star base, this is all you do. And then you have this little button here, Deploy Mech. And again, about an hour ago was the first time I had any experience with this whatsoever. But this is a Nova Kid mech. Each race has their own specific mech. And allows you to fly around in space and kind of explore things. It has a weapon and a drill. But this is a peaceful station. It's just a place where you go to get food. So you walk through here and then you start walking. They are a little slow. I, I, I bet you there's ways to upgrade them to make them a bit more feasible. And you click E to get out of them. And so you can build your own player star bases, which I'm really excited about and I'm looking forward to, to doing. They're just fun little places. Mostly I just use them for the same reason you use villages. You just loot things. I've already looted this one dry, so there's nothing left in there. But you can see these little bedrooms. And there they are. See, these are the first two Nova Kids I've ever seen aside from myself in this particular universe and was here in the space station. I can't wait to start building my own though. I'm really excited about that. Oh, come on. Not 100% good at the mechanics yet. But this is like a food space station. So the purpose of it is to go into these like vending machines and buy food if you need them. I don't really need food, but you know, whatever. I'll get a couple things. 
Uh, let's get some chocolate. Cool. And that's about that. I don't think any of these people can ask you for quests. At least they haven't to me yet. There is one person in every station who sells you the thing you need to create your own station. Which I've already purchased. But... Other than that, though, I haven't seen much you can do here again besides loot it dry. Now, there are some that are dangerous, that you have to fight things off, but right now I'm in a really dangerous star system, so I don't want to mess with those. But yeah, that's, that's the new mech system, the new the new space stations, which are really, really cool. I'm really excited about those. So yeah, so that's what this series is going to be. It's not going to be regular episodes at all, but as I build new bases, as I decorate my ship better, as I improve my mech and add new cool things to it, there's Rust Lord, he's really exciting. There's, um, I don't know how you get their names to show. Sometimes they show and sometimes they don't. You can see my crew's kind of special. They, I have some typical regular people like Florins and humans, but I also have this guy who I found on a, on a world. He's a particular NPC character that you can't necessarily find everywhere. And this guy's also, this is from the theme furniture that I purchased. I just did a job for him and he decided to join my ship. So yeah. That's all this is, is just for me to have fun, because I really love this game. I've been playing it a ton on my own time, haven't done any recording, and I just thought, Marcus, why don't you just do some recording, do an occasional episode, use it as a means by which you can have fun, casual talks with other YouTubers, and, and that's kind of what the plan is here. So keep your eyes open and look forward for new episodes of Starbound. Once again, by Chucklefish. Once again, the new update. I don't know if it has a name. They usually have cutesy names for their updates like upbeat giraffe or or super happy rhinoceros or whatever you know but it's the newest update it has mechs and space stations and i'm really looking forward to exploring it so once again ladies and gentlemen i am marcus aurelius i'd like to thank you very much for watching have a good one